I'm delighted to welcome Basil Dealthelm to the uh, CYC archive. And Basil, a member 59 years, you joined in 1961. Yeah, it's how, getting a long time. How did you get to join the, the CYC? How did that come about for you? Well, I was sailing down at what was then the HMS at Rushcutter, which is now Ransa area. And uh, we'd sailed in those naval whalers and dinghies down there. And then uh, I wanted to sail in the bigger offshore boats, you know, and get out, out the heads and on the ocean. And uh, I came down here and started to sail with uh, Jeff Ormiston on Tarni and Rolf Miche yeah. and Nick Kolosov. Right. Uh, and that went on for a few years and then on a few other boats and so on. So you did some long ocean racing on Tarni? Yeah, the, yeah. the races up and down the coast. Yeah. yeah. Jeff didn't go for, to Hobart because he was not terribly well, I yes. suppose. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, the, the shorter and So you, shorter you, races. you cut yeah. your teeth at Ransa and then just moved on into down the, the road. CYC. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And what are your early memories of the club and some of the characters and the, some oh, of the drinking? It was, it was great. Well, <laughs> several are still around, isn't yeah. it? Because I think Bill Saltis was the Commodore at the time and George Gerdes was, was here. And of course, Merv Davy was yeah, in control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, I, and uh, Tony Cable was around in those days, I think, wasn't he, in those early days? Oh, yes, yeah. of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were both young. Yeah. yeah. And I remember the best food ever was at, at the CYC in those days. I don't think it's ever got improved. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Spanish guy who had the restaurant in, Val. Uh, in town. Val. That Val, was a, that's yeah, right. Val. Yeah. yeah. Eating, eating garlic prawns out of a terracotta pot at the bar was good. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and the clubhouse itself, I mean, it was, it was pretty well, it was good the for original. those. Yeah, it was. But well, it, actually, I, I'm not sure if it was original, because I think when they bought it, it was just a boat shed, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. But because when I joined, it had the, the big upstairs bar and that sort of dance floor area. Yeah. And you looked out over the, the yeah, marina at that and stage. Marina, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then in and 1963, month. you did your first Hobart mm. race. Yeah, tell that's us about right. that. Yeah, that was on Enid. Yeah, which was uh, a big timber vessel, and it was a big boat at the time. But uh, that was a good race. It did, half the people on board got seasick, which is a bit unfortunate. And, uh, well, she was a big Alden catch, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, very heavily built, and it wasn't particularly fast unless it was blowing a gale, and it didn't like going to windward. That's why we ended up. 60 miles east of Tasman Island, I think. <laughs> and I think the, uh, the dearly departed Rolf Mache was with you then, wasn't he? Yeah, he was on board. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Rolf was always good to sail with. Yeah, and I remember yeah. Rolf telling me um, about that trip and he said that um, they got into, I think he got into Storm Bay and it was, was pretty vigorous, the wind. And yeah. So the owner, John Cockle, said, I've had enough of this. He put the motor on and retired. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it had a big engine in it, yeah. yeah. But meanwhile, I, I think you probably still hold the record for taking the longest period of time to complete your dentistry degree at Sydney University. Is oh, that, that right? that's, that's probably the case, yeah. <laughs> I don't think anybody's ever taken longer than 10, 11 years. <laughs> so sailing obviously came in the way. Definitely, yeah. yeah a, lot of tra well, a lot of world travelling. Yeah. So tell us how that started. I mean, you started with uni at, at dentistry and then you... Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it was interesting because I was offered medicine and uh, my family had been in medicine, but, but um, I knew somebody here in Sydney who was a dentist who worked half the year in England and half the year here and sailed on the Solent and sailed in Sydney Harbour and Bill Mobbs is the one and uh, who you, whom you would know. Yes. But, uh, and Mobbs, he shared the, the two jobs with his friend who was a skier who did the winters, and I thought that, and, and of course Mobsy, you know, talking to me as a young person, he said, you know, if you want to have a good life, do dentistry. You know? <laughs> and so that I did it. But um, I was never that dedicated to the, to the lifestyle, you know. And, and, and down here at the CYC, of course, in those days, there were loads of people who would roll in on funny little wooden boats that they'd bought in France or Spain. Or, or the south, or south of England, you know, Falmouth Key punts and things. I mean, you would remember those, Peter. Yeah. And uh, I, I could see, hmm, there's a, it's a good alternative out there, you know, to, to just racing up and down the coast. And uh, so I think after third year, I, I, I packed it in and took off. Yeah. <laughs> so dentistry was on hold, and you found yourself. 
backpacking and you ended up in the United Kingdom and did the 65 fast air race. Yes, yeah. And uh, that was great to get to England. And um, I got to Cowes and um, I found a place to stay for 50, cent, 50 pence or cent, would, would have been, I forget what the pence, currency would be. Pence, for pence the, a yeah. night, yeah. yeah. Up, up the high street in someone's back room. Yeah, that must have been classy, 50 yeah. pence a night. Well, it was just a little <laughs> local council house, <laughs> family, nice family. And uh, got a job as a, I was having a, a burger in a wimpy bar and the lady was talking on the phone that she needed a, to somebody, that she needed a chef and, or a cook. And uh, when she got off the phone, I said, well, I know how to cook hamburgers, you know, maybe I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> and I ended up working there, but it was on the conditional that when I had the chance to go sailing, I'd, I'd be not committed <laughs> to the burger bar. <laughs> so the Whippy Bar and High Street in Cows, you're the the chef. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was quite good fun. But yeah. the '65, that was the year that the um, our first Admirals Cup team exactly. was yeah, there, yeah, and we got yeah. second. And that was came out of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. I think Merv Davy, the aforementioned, he was the the manager of yeah, that team. Yeah, he would have been. Yeah, and yeah. Um, but you did the fast at that year. Yes, yeah. yeah, it was on an Irish boat. And very nice people. I think they owned a brewery or an Irish, a distillery somewhere in uh, Ireland, but never never got to that one. <laughs> <laughs> Handy people to know. But then uh, after that, you sailed on a very famous boat to. I guess Plymouth La Rochelle race. That was it, yeah. Yeah, Myth of Malham. Wow. And I'd read about that. So, you know, as yeah. a young person who was tw 21 or two or something, that was uh, quite exciting to, to, to was sail. Was John yeah. Illingworth on no, board? No, no, no. It was a new family that owned the boat. Right. But they were very proud of it. And they had a house in the, uh, on the high street in Cowes on the waterfront. And uh, so they did, although I didn't get to know the family well uh, over a long period of time, they obviously would have been in the sailing game for a long time, yeah. you know. And uh, she'd won a fast ad, hadn't she, when Illingworth had it, is that right? Oh, I, I, I imagine she'd won lots because yeah. the boat was designed, I think, the first time. Was it the first boat designed to the, the rule at that time? Which it might is, well which have was, been, yeah. It was a very famous boat. Yeah. yeah. Was that, well, it was called the IOR rule, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that the one? Uh, no, it was not the IRR or, rule. But whatever the, rule. Grand, yeah, yeah, whatever rule it was then, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Uh, and what was that race like on the myth? Was it good? Oh, it was good fun. Yeah. Yeah, 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 nice people. And uh, funnily enough, we get to La Rochelle and we'd been off to a function one night and I was sitting on the side of the dock because the boat was on a, on a mooring trot and waiting for a hitchhiker ride in a dinghy. And I was sitting with this guy next to me and who was waiting to go to his boat. And we exchanged names and he said, my name is Juan Carlos. And the, his family, well, he was later the King of Spain, but they wow. were living in exile at that time. And uh, so it, he was probably 25 or something like that at the time. And they had their boat, Giraglia, I think, because they traveled with a race boat and a big classic for the wine. Right. They kept the wine on board. Well, that's a good experience. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. I mean, my Spanish friends are always impressed. Did you practice any dentistry while you were away? No, no, because I hadn't, I hadn't <laughs> finished the course at that stage. I just thought you might have kept your hand in by looking. No, no. <laughs> I just cleaned my own teeth. <laughs> but um, but it, the dentistry turned out well because as soon as I graduated, we sailed across to England. And but hang on, you're getting a bit ahead of yeah. yourself here. Mm. Sorry, yeah. no, because yeah. okay. graduation <laughs> took 11 years, so yeah, we've got a, a bit of, years. a few to fill in here. A few quick yeah. years studying. So, <laughs> yeah. so after, after the fast end, I, I guess you came back and acquired, bought a boat here in, in Sydney. In Sydney, yeah. Tell us about that, because yeah. that's got a lot of history involved with the CYC, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. By the bloke, bloke that built it and the whole story. Yeah, well... It, Josh uh, had built the boat. Josh a, Dole. Josh yeah. Dole had built the boat yeah. on a farm in New Zealand, and the engine for the boat had been connected up to a 44-gallon drum of water to cool the engine and a bands, uh, or not a bands, or some sort of saw that cut the wood. And I think the boat was built from one tree on his farm. And um, he arrived in Sydney and lived here for a while. And then when I bought the boat from him, he bought or actually started a little chandrali in one of the buildings here. Yeah. It's just a passage 
And he ran that for donkey's years. Yeah. yeah. And then got a bigger shop. And, and That's passed, right. And then and after sadly that, he passed away. Yeah. yeah and then his son, his son Bob Dole, Bob ran it up to yeah. Yeah. recently, a few yeah. years ago. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. he was very well known character around the oh, CMC. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And tell us a bit about Zaraban. You, you bought, oh. it, bought it pretty cheaply? Or I bought it for $9,700. Right. Uh, I've never forgotten that because it seemed like a lot of money at the time, but it um, seems less and less as time goes by. <laughs> and how big was it? It was 36 feet right. and it had a bowsprit on it and a stern sprit, so it was about 44 feet when you, when you tied it up on the dock, you needed that much space. And uh, it, was, it was well built and it took us around the world and we survived a hurricane in the Indian Ocean and um, we never hit anything, which was good but uh, in, under the water. And um, we did a lot of mileage in it. We had a, went to some great places. I mean, one of the most exciting was we got down to Krakatoa in Java, which was um, in full eruption. And that, that was really exciting, yeah. And uh, then we, we took it down to the Seychelles. And um, in the Seychelles, we spent about a year. I worked in a dental practice there. Um, thereafter, we, we took it up to the Mediterranean and stayed in, in England. So you well, went in England in the winter time. So you'd graduated by then. How yeah. you'd graduated in, in dentistry. Yes. But then yeah. you, your first trip was to New Zealand, I think. Yes. Tell when us I about first, the first bought the boat. Uh, I, I had the boat here, and I met a guy who who was just arrived on his bicycle from England. And uh, he was sleeping in the, in the old tin lunch shed at the, under the CYC. You know, he found this lonely shed to sleep in at night time. <laughs> and uh, so having lost, his bike got stolen at King's Cross. So he was sort of bikeless. And uh, he'd done a bit of sailing in England. And together we, we took off for New Zealand with, a, with another Scottish guy. And another uh, crew member too. Yeah, it? three of us on board. No, yeah. wasn't there something else on board? Uh, no, no contraband. No. Didn't, didn't you have a cat? <laughs> oh, we had the cat, yeah. <laughs> yes. And because uh, I bought a cat on the boat. And the cat was great. It was a Siamese cat. And um, that, it, uh, it, yeah, we, we took the cat. It was on the boat for a very, very long time. And I fi finally gave the cat away to somebody uh, in East Africa. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but, um, yeah, we went to New Zealand from here. And... I'd done a little bit of navigating, and so I knew how to use the sextant, but I hadn't had much experience with it. But we, we, we figured that we would try and find Ball's Pyramid, which was 400 miles from here, and if we could find that... Off Lord Howe Island, yeah. Yeah, with, yeah, the, with yeah. the sextant, that then uh, we would uh, continue on to New Zealand, <laughs> and if, if we, we failed, we, we'd never... We'd never miss Australia, <laughs> but in fact, we used to sit at the the, the the table there and work out the sites. The two of us were, were doing it because we were both quite interested in it. And over the years, of course, you get quite good at doing that yeah. sextant navigation. You know, suns and moons and stars and so. On. So, had we become a dentist at this stage, or were we still? No, no, go? that was that was uh, during one of my one of my my three year break. <laughs> And then you went round the top of Australia and across to, to East Africa, as you said, yeah, well, to Mombasa. Up to Singapore, up to to Singapore, Singapore yeah. yeah, Singapore. And yeah. Uh, through Indonesia and up to Singapore. Indonesia is magnificent, of course, to travel through. And uh, I was offered um, a job in Singapore because the boat needed a new engine. It had a petrol engine. And uh, uh, up through Indonesia, where fuel was cheap, we had, you know, I mean, there was so much petrol cans around the boat it was like sailing in a time bomb <laughs> I, I got to Singapore and a friend with whom I'd sailed in Sydney was a master mariner and he was running an oil re oil um, searching um, research size, seismic survey right, boat yeah. up in the in the South China Sea and in the Java Sea and he offered me a job on board and uh, his rationale was that uh, I um, would be quite good at n nosing around coral reefs because they had to tow a cable and, and they just had a, had a chap on board who'd, who'd nicked a propeller uh, 
on one of these reefs and, you know, loads and loads of damage. So, so he, he sent me down to Jakarta to see a, a Dutch priest because the priest would set me up with a Panamanian second mate's ticket, which would <laughs> qualify uh, <laughs> through his contacts at the Panamanian as we, and, and that, that worked well. And um, you know, spent a year doing that, saved up for the engine, put in a little Volvo in Singapore mm -hmm. in a Chinese shipyard. That was good fun. But around those waters, uh, um, you know, it's a long time ago, <clears throat> was piracy or an issue at all? Never. Uh, you know, in, in all my sailing career, we've never encountered anything close to piracy. The nearest thing are the port officials that come in uniform, you know, yeah. you know in some countries, you know, corrupt officials. Yeah. You know, but in places like Indonesia, um, it's amazing what... And you felt safe the whole time? You don't have to bribe very much money to smooth everything out. Yeah. Yeah. But then you, you took Zaraban to Africa, then up, up to, through the sewers into the... Yeah, into, into the, the Med. Med. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got married by that time. And um, so <coughs> we, we were in the Med for um, oh, quite a few years with the boat because I, I had got back and studied dentistry and um what did you leave in, the boat somewhere and yeah, fly home and yeah. pick up the industry um, yeah. we brought the boat back to sydney at one stage and we brought it we we did a deal in in east africa on a freighter and we got it back to sydney and i remember bill bold who you yeah, know from the yeah. sewer, he helped us unload it here in sydney and that's when i came back and did the final two years so the, the week after the graduation we left again <laughs> <laughs> And where do we go then? Yeah, we went to Lord Howe Island because right. I had a job as a dentist then right. um, on Lord Howe, a chap in Marrickville who used to go there fishing and fixing the teeth. He, he wanted to have a break and uh, he gave me that. And then we, that was our, our continuation then was on again to the north of Australia and through Indonesia to Singapore right. and um, with my wife. And uh, then... Um, was the boat still holding together well? Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was always good. And uh, I, when I eventually sold it to Max Keane year, some years later in Sydney, uh, it was still a good boat. Yeah. And so uh, after, you, after you sold it, what was the next vessel that you had? Ah, um, didn't have a boat for a long time. We, um, the, in the right sequence, I think... In England, I bought a, a Swanson 40-something, 6, 4, from another dentist who'd sailed it halfway around and left it in Spain in a bit of a derelict condition and sailed that back to Australia. And then uh, later Swan on... Swan or Swanson? Swan? Swanson. Swanson, yeah. okay. Yeah. And after that, we went to Swan Yachts. Right. Yeah. And then we bought a... Back in England again, we bought a Swan 41 and... Subsequently, after that, we bought a Swan 44, and so now the, the current Swan. So the yeah. Swan 41, where mm. did you, you cruise the Med with that, or you, you crossed yeah. the Atlantic Yeah, we with bought that? that in England. Right. And um, we took it down to the Med in the Caribbean, and we, that was the first time we did the Ark Rally. In the I Caribbean. think it was the second or the third Ark Rally, yeah. which was always a lot of fun, because it was, uh, it was a bit like twilight racing, you know, that sort of competitive spirit, but not too serious. But did you follow Bill Mobb's advice and leave the boat in the med and then go to England to work? And oh, yes, yeah, all the time, yeah. Because yeah. we'd do uh, a season in the med, and then in the October I'd go up to, to England, and uh, it, it was quite good for dentists in England in that there was a national health service that, you know, and a lot of rotten teeth, uh, like 50 million of them. Right. And, uh, <laughs> You could arrive on a Thursday and be working, get a job on Friday and be working somewhere on Monday. And um, we'd spend the six months there, or seven months, cash up and, and then having left our boat in the med and then go back again. And all the, the cruising around the med, um, mm. favourite spots, where, where, where did you find the, uh, the I, nicest? Uh, I think the places I liked best were the, the, the Ionian Islands on the west coast of Greece. And that was because... The Aegean Islands just got too wild in the middle of the summertime with the Meltemi winds. It really, they, you know, yeah. and every time you moved from one island to another, it might only be ten miles. You had to batten down everything, it's lashed down everything. And, uh, that and that. I remember sitting in Mykonos one time, 
tied up to the roll to the dock. Uh, the boats were rolling, and the, I asked an old fisherman. It was June, and my friend was joining me there. And I said, "How long is it going to blow like this?" And he said, "Till September." <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. yeah, Greece is very nice, but uh, all of the Mediterranean is beautiful. Yeah. And did you do any racing with that boat at that stage? In, in no, the med? no, no, no. Uh, apart from uh, when we went to the Caribbean with that boat, we took we did some racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, and uh, and you also did um, the, the the tragic fastnet race in 1979. Yes. Tell yes. us a bit about that race. Well, the first job I got in England, I I went one February. I, I think I'd left the boat in Singapore. The, the, and my wife was visiting her family. I got to this place in London and there was a lady in London who looked after dentists, like an agent putting you in jobs and things like that. This lovely lady from Melbourne. And she always had a knack of sending you to the right places, it seems. And she sent me to this Kiwi practice out in West London in Ealing. And uh, I, I, it was like four o'clock, already dark, <laughs> when I got there on the bus. And uh, he, the dentist who was running it was a, a friend of the owner who was back in New Zealand. And you know, he asked me what I'd been doing since I'd graduated. And I said, well, I haven't been doing much dentistry, but I've been doing a lot of sailing. And he said, sailing? He said, wow, that's interesting. He said, Tony, who owns the practice, is on holidays. He's just building an ocean racer down in, uh, at, at Camp at Nicholson's in Cowes. He says, would you be interested in sailing? And I, I said, I think I, I think it would be all right. Yeah, and he said, would you mind not working sometimes on a Friday? I said, well, I never wanted to work more than four days a week. And uh, he said, I think you got the job. <laughs> and I worked with that practice many times. And it was in, in the second boat that he bought or built a few years later that we actually did the 79 Fastnet race. Yeah. And uh, we then... Retired from the race about 80 miles from the rock, yeah, but got safely back to Plymouth. 